The cutting-edge USS Discovery played a key role in the early days of the Federation Klingon War in 2256. Under the command of Captain Loka, the ship was initially a testbed science vessel that could accommodate 300 discrete scientific missions. The Discovery was designed around the most famous resource, the spore drive an experimental propulsion system that allows the ship to travel 90 light years in 1.3 seconds. The spore drive worked by harvesting mycelium spores to travel in the mycelial plane. The Crossfield class was built with the spore drive as the main integrated component. To travel using the jump drive, it utilizes a special resources called cultivated mycelium. It allowed a vessel to instantly jump to any point in the universe. Mycelium spores can be mined from 15 systems and can be cultivated from a refinery that creates cultivated mycelium. The USS Discovery was unique for traditional Starfleet vessel because of the ship's jump drive, an organic propulsion system that utilized the mycelium spores. By using the spores, the ship can travel the mycelial network, a discrete subspace domain. Chief engineer and co-creator of the drive Paul have envisioned it as a peaceful technology before Starfleet adapted it for military purposes. However, during the war against the Klingon, it was turned into a warship, and much of the Discovery resources were devoted to accelerating research and development of a new propulsion technology. Both the Federation and the Klingons secretly used this technology to gain an advantage over the other side. This technology was no longer in use by 2260. In this size comparison, we're going to start with the Enterprise A, which have a length of 305 meters or 1,000 feet, with a width of 137 meters or 440 feet. While the larger Galaxy Class Enterprise D has a length of 641 meters or 2100 feet, with a width of 495 meters or 1624 feet. The longer USS Discovery has a total length of 750 meters or 2460 feet, and a width of 300 meters or 984 feet. It had a height of 50 meters or 164 feet and with a mass of 200,000 metric tons. Even though the Discovery was quite long compared to the Enterprise D, the USS Discovery could only accommodate 136 crew members and had a total of 15 decks on board. But its most significant component was the experimental spore drive propulsion system that allowed it to travel 90 light years in just 1.3 seconds. I wanted to thank Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of online classes and members across 150 countries who come together to find inspiration and take the next steps in the creative journey. Have you ever tried to learn a new skill like creating 3D animation or editing videos to start your own YouTube channel? Maybe try to level up your skills for work and potentially make some additional income stream from YouTube or side hustle. On Skillshare, just type in 3D animation on the search button and select the introduction to 3D animation. Then select the topic of matter that will work for you. Under this selection, you can choose many options including animation basic, modeling, or texture mapping. In addition, this great opportunity to explore the Skillshare class library is completely free for one month. Unlike YouTube, the videos are free, so you can stay in the zone while exploring new skills. New premium classes launch each week, so there's always something new to discover. The first 1,000 people to use this link will get one month free trial of Skillshare. Even though the USS Discovery shared many design philosophy of previous Starfleet vessels, it had many unique features. The ship had a geometric design, a triangular engineering hull, 
and lack a traditional cylindrical shaped body of the Constitution class ships. In front of the engineering hall was the navigational deflector. Unique to Discovery, the saucer section of the ship can rotate when it needs to jump. The profile view of the ship was very flat, and it had a height of only 50 meters or 164 feet. The ship also comes standard with a pair of extremely long warp nacelles, with the Bussard's collector at the front of the nacelles. The shutter bay was located at the aft end of the engineering hall. The design of the primary hall consists of a saucer with three separate wings, an inner and outer ring that were connected by a thin neck to the engineering hall. In addition, the ship also comes equipped with multiple phasers and photon torpedo, one on the front and one on the back of the warp nacelles. Fire torpedoes. The main bridge of the USS Discovery stood on the center main body of the ship's primary hall. At the very center of the room was the captain's chair. From here, the captain can easily interact with all bridge officers. Other duty stations lined the perimeter wall of the bridge, the spore ops, and communication station. Behind the captain's chair was the science station. The bridge also come equipped with two tubal lips. In keeping with tradition, the main view screen was at the very front of the bridge with the ops officers and con officers behind it. At the back of the bridge was the ready room and silver bay. Facing the wall was the engineering and technical station. The door next to the view screen leads to the corridor and into the restroom for the bridge. One of the ingenious new inventions was the programmable matter which was a major upgrade to the bridge console when it traveled 900 years into the future. Whoa! What just happened? That's the retrofitted programmable matter. It reads your bioscience. Do we really need all of this? The hell yeah, we do! It's adaptive. Learns and adjusts your reflexes to create an interface style unique to you. Let's take a closer look inside the USS Discovery. Like many Starfleet vessel, the main bridge was located at the very top of the saucer section with Pike's ready room adjacent to the bridge. Right below the main bridge was the computer core, the heart of the Starfleet computer system, and on the right of the core was the transporter room. The vessel used an older Duotronic computer core, which was a common system used aboard the Constitution class starships. On the inner ring was where the crew and officers' quarter were located. It also included the mess hall and sick bay. At the furthest end of the outer ring was the disc magnetic rotation system, the spore field emitters, and the second transporter room. The USS Discovery comes equipped with several sick bay with the airlock room located above it. Discovery was fitted with a spore space sensor and main deflector near the bottom of the engineering hall. On the secondary hall was the third transporter room, the disc magnetic rotation systems, and the spore field emitters at the opposite end of the outer ring. Similar in design to other Starfleet vessel, main engineering was located on the secondary hall, with a spore growth lab adjacent to it. 
On many Federation starships, the warp core was usually located near main engineering. The ship also comes equipped with a rather large main cargo hull. And toward the aft end of the ship was the shuttle bay and impulse engines. The USS Discovery carried a complement of Class C shuttlecraft when it traveled. By the time the Federation Klingon War of 2256, the Class C was the standard Federation shuttlecraft for Starfleet. It was piloted by one to two people with the capacity of multiple passengers. The craft impulse engines were located on the aft section, and the main cabin for the passengers was located in the long main section between the cockpit and the aft section. The aft section was slightly enlarged and appeared more boxy. On the venture hall on either side were fitted with a pair of warp nacelles. As a crossfield class starship, the Discovery was officially designated as a science vessel. The USS Discovery was unconventional due to the development and evolution of spore drive technology and its use of cultivated mycelium. The geometric design and architecture made it unique because it abandoned many of the Starfleet vessel traditional design. After Discovery arrived in the 32nd century, the ship underwent several major modifications. Part of this refit included the installation of programmable matter into all stations for better control and converting the ship's warp engines to be detached for improved maneuverability and performance. During the refit, the ship was recommissioned with the registry NCC-1031A. The new architecture allows for continuous minute adjustments in the position of the nacelles to optimize the warp field geometry. So what are your thoughts on the USS Discovery? Let me know in the comment section below. And if you want to see more technical 3D animation on the Defiant, the Enterprise D, or Voyager, check out my playlist on the right hand corner. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.